listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. A comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerrard. Hey, welcome on in. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerrard. What a crazy week in uh, college football. We're going to get through all of it. Uh, great list of guests on today's show. Idaho State coach Mike Kramer will join us in segment number one. Northern Colorado running back Trey Reich will join us in segment number two. And we'll wrap the whole thing up with FCS senior director from Stats, Craig Haley. But let's get things rolling by looking at last weekend's games. Weber State controlled from start to finish in a 23-3 home victory over UC Davis. Wildcat running back Trey Sean Garrett with 152 yards, three scores as the Wildcats hold UC Davis to only 174 offensive yards. They move to 5-5 five and five on the season. Cali, uh, Cal Poly picking up a big home win over in-state rival Sacramento State. Mustangs rushing for 366 yards. Also, Chris Brown throws for a pair of touchdowns as Cal Poly builds a 26 to nothing lead midway through the third quarter. Never look back. They win that game 36-14. Northern Colorado, a massive upset, upset of Portland State, 35-32, back and forth affair. Portland State took the lead with a few minutes to go in the game. However, uh, UNC running back Trey Reich scores a go-ahead touchdown with less than a minute to go, and UNC gets his first ever upset over a top-10 team in FCS history. Another big upset happened at Eastern Washington as Northern Arizona gets a 52-30 victory. Lumberjacks led this game wire to wire. They forced four Eagle turnovers in the game. Marcus Alford with a pick six in that game for NAU. The win keeps the Lumberjacks alive in playoff contention. One team that's not only alive in playoff contention, they're leading the pace. That's Southern Utah. The Thunderbirds with a 34-23 road victory over Montana State. T-Birds force three more turnovers in the game as they continue to lead the nation in turnover margin. Also, James Kowser breaks Jared Allen's big sky tackles for loss records in that game. And finally, what a crazy game this was. Montana and Idaho State, they go right down to the wire in overtime, tied at 27 apiece. Idaho State is in position to win that game with a field goal, but a bad snap leads to an Eric Johnson scoop and score for the Montana touchdown. The win keeps the Grizz in the hunt for the postseason race as they pick up the victory. Joining us now, the man who unfortunately had a closer view of that than he would have liked, Idaho State head coach Mike Kramer. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on. I know it's a little salt in the wound, but uh, you've, you've seen a lot of football games. Have you ever experienced anything quite like that before? Well, it's amazing. In 2015, I've seen more of them than I care to. Uh, <laughs> Michigan Michigan State ended up that way in yeah. a couple games. And our conference have ended up that way. In fact, uh, I think Jay Hill down at Weber State would feel that way about missing a field goal after kicking a bunch at Eastern Washington. So, you know, in the in the year that Yogi Berra dies, it ain't over till it's over. And uh, it was not over on Saturday until the Grizzlies stood in our end zone with the ball. And a great win for the Grizzlies, and it keeps them in the hunt. And in a wild, raucous year in the conference, uh, probably – more pro forma than an exception to the rule. You know, I wanted to talk about that a little bit, too, because, you know, you've been around the big sky for a number of years. Is this the most parity from top to bottom that you've seen in this conference? Well, I think recently yeah, we'd have to say that. Uh, you know, when you have 13 teams in the league, it's really hard really to gain the fabric of what you're looking at. And, and I think any time you sit down and try to figure out who's going to be good and who's not going to be good, you have to take into account more – than just who's coming back from last year. Uh, in, a, in a conference that has several schools that have a lot of guys who are coming back from LDS missions, there can be a big impact in your program by guys who are mature who are coming into your program that aren't on the radar in terms of who you're looking at in their personnel. Mm. And hence the rise of not only Southern Utah, but you'd have to include Weber State as one of those teams that's having a very solid year and a very good program. Obviously, you gained some traction last year. You had some uh, momentum coming into this season, but you lose a few defensive starters in camp to injuries. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where injuries can really decimate it, uh, a season, sometimes before it even starts. Well, it's a double-fisted whack because we always know that at least uh, on one side of, of, of our scheduling the year, there's going to be two teams that we're going to play against that are that are pretty darn good, and that would be those two FBS teams. Teams yeah. that we've got to play. We got beat 52 to nothing and then 80 to 8, and we were gutted as a program. It took us so long just to regain the confidence of our players. By that time, the whole season had evaporated down the drain. So, uh, you know, it's one of the financial necessities of our situation. 
it's something that you have to be able to handle mentally. And I think if we failed anything this year, we failed mentally to come out of those games with some sort of promise or progress for the year. On the other hand, we all also hit a very hot Portland State team early in the year after they came out off of a game in which they had beaten a, a Pac-12 opponent, Washington State, who's done pretty darn good. We also ran into a, a very good Cal Poly team who was very healthy at that time. By the time the dust had settled and we had gotten to the middle of October, we were playing for 2016, and so that beat just keeps going on. So let's talk a little bit about some of the players that have shown some signs and, and growth of development or, or, or units on your team. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that, that you've liked out of your squad that, that, that's come a long way since the start of the beginning of the season. Well, in a positive sense, uh, the only numbers that are really good for us are in our overall offense in mm -hmm. terms of first downs. I think we've been pretty consistent on offense, uh, been able to move the ball between the 20s. We've been not as good, obviously, in the red zone, and we have certainly been able to avoid the pratfalls of, <laughs> of an inexperienced at quarterback. And I think that with a junior and a, and a freshman, uh, the, our future is bright, yet we've got to really gain a handle on it our inability to stop ourselves from ham handing a score to the opposing team. In fact, we've given up seven of those this year on either interception returns or kick returns, and that's just been uh, – it's been – it's derision to, to a defense that was wounded in preseason by injuries. Yet our defense has continued to rise, led by an excellent defensive front. Tyler Cooter, one of the premier interior defense linemen, in this conference, and certainly a guy who's uh, worthy of a lot of a lot of looks from the NFL, but our two young linebackers have shown that they can line up and play. Uh, we've unearthed a couple of now freshman safeties who've shown that they can be what they need to be, and all this comes in the the bloom of a, of a great senior season by an outstanding wide receiver at Madison Mango, who who's really had an outstanding year and should have a great finish to his career. As you continue on in your tenure there at Idaho State, have you seen that program and the expectations around it continue to grow and develop? Because in the spirit of full disclosure, I kind of grew up in that area, and, and I know that community is dying for Idaho State to really uh, get, get back on track in, in terms of college football. Well, the thing we wanted to avoid, uh, we, we desperately wanted to avoid a, a fall uh, off of any four season. You know, go back all the way to our national championship year of 1981, we ended up going three and eight the next year. And it just seems like yo-yo impact on our fans yeah. has eroded the confidence of fans who would buy a ticket for entertainment value only. We do have, though, a great hardcore group of fans who come to games uh, and have, have watched a lot of things. And what they saw last Saturday was something that even, even they would scratch their heads about. But uh, I, I feel good about where we're going in terms of being the correct type of academic program and social responsible program that can make this thing endure. But our on-field performance did not need to fall to where it is this year. So, again, you just got to pull up our pants, cinch up our belt, and get going again. Love it. Hey, as you, uh, as you talked about, uh, you've got Montana State coming up. What have you seen out of them as you prepare for this game uh, coming up this weekend? Well, early in the season, obviously uh, – Montana State, very dynamic, especially on offense with Dakota Pruka, a guy that can run and pass and run. <laughs> I mean, he can. When, when, when he runs and he passes, he's pretty good. But when he runs and passes on the same play, he's really, really good. Uh, great upper body flexibility, ability to throw the ball very accurately on the move, which is a very rare trait, and uh, it makes him triply, da triply dangerous. Uh, and, and he's obviously been the catalyst for their offense which may be around him. They don't have the dynamic players that they're used to having. They, they've unearthed the transfer tight end in Sandlin, who's really been a, a good downfield threat. Yet, defensively, they, they're not in the heritage that they've been in the past. And I know that their whole defensive staff is pretty seasoned, pretty experienced. They have a strong idea of what they want to do and how to do it. It's only a matter of time before they get themselves welded back together. But Southern Utah last week just played great against them. They hammered and hounded Hammond. Uh, Olsen, the Southern Utah quarterback, throughout the day, but Olsen was just a little bit bigger than the moment. And Ed Lamb's Southern Utah team continues on a storybook season uh, by escaping out of Bozeman. So the Bobcats come to our place. Uh, both of us are, are licking our wounds. We'll find out which coaching staff can rally their guys and get them to play with intent and interest. 
for all four quarters. Well, Coach, I always appreciate these conversations. Uh, you're one of the best. Uh, keep it rolling this season, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Well, we're having we're having a tough season, but we're still growing and maturing. And eventually, a lot of our young guys are going to be darn good players in a conference that has a lot of width and breadth to it right right now. So, uh, I love to see uh, Southern Utah, Weber State. Uh, rise out of nowhere in Portland State, out of the bottom of the rankings. <laughs> it shows that both the coaches and the media have no clue about who's going to be good in November, and I think that's pretty darn cool. So, well, thanks for having me on, and uh, good luck to everybody else in the conference. Well, I don't know about I don't know about the coaches, but I guarantee the media doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, coach, the same way. Hey, thanks a lot. You got it. Thanks, coach. That's Mike Kramer, Idaho State head coach, right here on this week in Big Sky Football. We'll take a break. Come back, and uh, we'll reveal our Root Sports play. Players of the week. We'll also chat with Northern Colorado running back Trey Reich. It's all straight ahead on segment two here on this week in Big Sky Football. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us, and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. We've got Northern Colorado running back Trey Reek joining us here in just a moment. But first, let's reveal our Root Sports Players of the Week for the Big Sky Conference. Let's start with the special teams. Uh, Northern Arizona kicker punter Ryan Hawkins winning the award for the second consecutive week. Had a fumble recovery on a kickoff in that game. Also had uh, a couple field goals, deep punt, touchbacks, helped NAU control the field in an upset win over Eastern Washington. Root Sports Defensive Player of the Week, that's Montana's J.R. Nilsson. Uh, had a pick six in Montana's win over Idaho State. Also four solo tackles in that game. And finally, our Root Sports Offensive Player of the Week is our next guest, Trey Reek. With over 200 all-purpose yards in that game, he scored the game-winning touchdown on a two-yard catch while also rushing for 145 yards. Northern Colorado gets the upset win over previously top 10 ranked Portland State at home, 35-32. And with that, Trey Reek joins us now. Trey, how are you? I'm doing good, sir. How about you? Doing well. I know you just got out of class. Uh, thanks for carving out a few moments for us. Uh, tell us what the atmosphere in that locker room was like uh, after picking up that big win. I mean, anytime you get a big win like that, you're really excited, especially against a great team like Portland State. So, you know, we took the win. We were really excited about it. Now we're just looking on to North Dakota. You know, it appeared like Portland State had scored that touchdown late. It appeared like they had the game in hand. But uh, what was it going on to the, you know, when, when that offense takes the field again, did you feel like, hey, we got more than enough time and more than enough ability to go down here and score this touchdown and win this game? I think, you know, with the offense we had and the leaders we had, especially like Jacob Nippo and our quarterback, you know, we had no doubt in our mind that we had a good chance to go down there and uh, make it happen. So we were really excited and didn't take too much into it. Similar situation in a loss to Eastern Washington. Uh, you hang on to win this one. Uh, did you take any lessons maybe from that Eastern Washington loss and, and implement it into this game? Well, you know, Eastern Washington loss was a hard fought, you know, last minute. Still go by them, which they were a great team also. But we kind of looked at it as you know, we have to keep our cool throughout the rest of the game, especially towards the end. You know, we got in the same situation. So I guess what we learned from that is just to trust the process like Coach Collins says all the time and go out and get the W. Well, let's talk about Coach Collins. Uh, we've talked to him on this show before. He's a great interview. What's he like to play for? He's a great coach to play for. I mean, he, you know, he keeps us level-headed and keeps us together and always, you know, keeps us focused on the prize. And, uh, always talks about the process and how important it is not to look to the future of what you're going to get, but instead to trust the journey and to 
really enjoy what you're doing while you're doing it. Well, you've had an opportunity to type to uh, try to change the culture there. Uh, what's that process been like, uh, kind of building the foundation of what hopefully will be a lot of uh, future uh, football success there at that, squ- at that, at that school? Well, uh, the school uh, came from you know, national championships and Division Two. We're just trying to build back up what we you know, used to have and bring it back to prominence. I think we're starting to turn around a little bit. The culture around here is starting to, you know, become more and more better as we go along. So we're just you know trying to take it one game one game at a time and see what we can do. So let's talk about your journey. How did you end up in Northern Colorado? Um, well, coming up on the uh, high school, one school that heavily recruited me was in Colorado. And when I came up here, I took an official visit. I really took to the coaches, especially Coach Collins, you know, their their way of football and their take to it. So I really just love the school. I love the guys around here. And it just seemed like a great, great opportunity. I know uh, you want to keep playing football as long as you can, but uh, what are you preparing for in life after football? What, what's your ambitions as far as that goes? Uh, my, ambition, my ambitions are uh, pretty simple. I just uh, want to be a firefighter someday when I'm older and hopefully coach some football. There you go. Not bad at all. All right, you have two remaining games. What's your uh, what's your goals outside of going 2-0 and in the final two games of the season? What do you guys want to get accomplished there at Northern Colorado? 2-0 uh, is obviously the big thing that we want, but we just want to keep building off what we have because, you know, we've really come a long way from the beginning of the season and we've grown a lot, especially the younger guys. So we just want to keep that process going on and, you know, hopefully get a few wins. out of it. We've got some tough teams coming up like North, North Dakota and Abilene Christian. So we just want to keep following what we're doing and not get off track. I know it's a little early in the week, but, you know, you, you want to get into coaching. You want to coach a little bit. So give us the game plan. What do you guys need to do this weekend to pick up a W? I don't know. They have a great run stopping defense. And, you know, that's obviously the focal point is to be able to, you know, establish both sides of the ball. But we're – we're not too worried. We, just, we know they're a great defense, so we just have to you know, play them as they are and try to stick to our game plan and stick to what we do best and see what happens. Well, Trey, we appreciate it. Congratulations on the honors. Uh, the Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week. Keep it rolling. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. All right. Thank you. Take care. Northern Colorado running back Trey Reek right here on This Week in Big Sky Football. All right, coming up next, we have a chance to go one-on-one with Craig Haley. We'll get his thoughts on all the action coming up this weekend, and uh, we'll also preview all the games as well. It's all straight ahead. Segment number three here on This Week in Big Sky Football. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans, every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS. Every down, every day. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back, working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. This week in Big Sky Football. All right, final segment of the show. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. We're going to chat with Craig Haley in just a moment. But let's preview this upcoming weekend game and where you can find those games. Uh, let's start with Northern Colorado traveling to Grand Forks to take on North Dakota. Game starts at 1 o'clock Central Time on Midco Sports Network and also be found on WatchBigSky.com. Montana State plays at Idaho State. Kickoff at 2.35 Mountain Time. That game can be found on Cal's Media in Montana. And, of course, you can watch it again on WatchBigSky.com. Cal Poly and UC Davis, they'll do battle at 2 o'clock Pacific on Saturday. Also available on WatchBigSky.com. Sacramento State and Northern Arizona. This game's got some playoff implications. Game kicks off at 2 o'clock Mountain Time. It can be found on Fox Sports Arizona as well as WatchBigSky.com. And also, how about undefeated Southern Utah? You just heard Mike Kramer talk about how good this team is. Southern Utah travels to face Portland State at 2.05 Pacific time. This one's going to be a fun one, and you can catch it on WatchBigSky.com. 
Now remember, Root Sports, your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference. This week's Big Sky football game on Root Sports features Eastern Washington traveling to Missoula to take on the Grizzlies of Montana. Kickoff is at 1.30 Mountain Time on Root Sports as well as DirecTV's Audience Network. And make sure if you're a fan of the Big Sky Conference, get involved with the social media conversation for this game. Use the hashtag uh, EWU, EWU at UM on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also use it with hashtag where I root to get involved with the broadcast. But again, that hashtag uh, EWU at UM or hashtag where I root to get involved with those broadcasts. All right, let's go out to the phones. Welcome in FCS Senior Director from Stats is Craig Haley. Craig, how are you, my man? Okay, how you doing, Scott? I'm good. If I could... Uh, Let's say if I could, you know, hop you in the DeLorean and take you 88 miles an hour into the past and say, hey, the biggest game near the end of the season would be Southern Utah at Portland State. Would you? Uh, how much would you laugh at me at that point? <laughs> I would. I would have bet my house on it that I'd win that one. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't bet my house on it. <laughs> but it's you know it's fun how this season's played out, and it's been fun for the conference to see how these two teams. Now I know Portland State with the loss last week uh, maybe doesn't put this game as much on the spotlight as as it could have been, but still a tremendous game between these two teams coming up. Definitely. Um, Southern Utah, you know, has really gone out and earned it. I mean, Portland State uh, as well. I mean, I, I think the depth of the conference just shows you how good the big sky is. I mean, Portland State, you know, they, they wish they could have that Northern Colorado game back. You know, a Montana with Weber or Northern Arizona with UC Davis. There's, it's, it, it, you face somebody good every week and you have to be playing your best or, or you know, you're going to get knocked off because these teams know each other well. We just talked to Trey Reek from uh, Northern Colorado. What do you look at their improvement after coming off that win against Portland State? Is this a team we need to keep an eye on going into next season? Certainly. Um, I, I think, yes, I think that's one of the bigger surprises of the year that uh, Northern Colorado beat Portland State, who had been on such a roll. I mean, it, it's good for Ernest Collins to, to enjoy this kind of success. I mean, he's obviously bringing in uh, the recruits to, to, to make his systems work. Um, no doubt. I mean, you know, they have a chance here to finish with a winning record. I don't think anybody foresaw that. Um, I, I, it's great to see, and, and I think, yes, you know, they're headed in the right direction, and, and you know, hopefully the, the university sees that with, with Ernest. When you're evaluating teams going into the playoffs and, and where these teams are going to be seated, Eastern Washington, they lose to Northern Arizona, but in all reality, they really haven't looked like their dominant self since probably Idaho State in mid-October. Are you worried about this team going into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, they've been playing with fire. I mean, that was the only game that really didn't come down to perhaps a final possession. You know, I mean, all their games were close except for that one. Um, they, they're not putting teams away with the kind of defense they've been playing. Obviously, they're just going to sling the ball around and do great with that. But at the same time, they, they, they need to have some kind of a uh, – rushing offense going so I yeah I think there's concerns they're in a precarious spot here with their final two games I mean you know they, they looked in great shape just just a week ago and and suddenly you know now now you kind of hit the panic button a little bit because yeah you look back and you say well you know they they were they were playing some close games Mm -hmm. uh, Craig Haley from Stats joining us here on this week in Big Sky Football as he's been kind enough to do all throughout the season. Southern Utah now sitting atop the Big Sky. They're at 6-0. and We've talked about this team. And, of course, they have remaining games against Portland State and then at home against Northern Arizona. Let's just say for the sake of argument, uh, Ed Lamb's crew wins out. Do you see them as a team deserving of a first-round uh, bye in the playoffs? Yes. If they win out, they certainly uh, will have a first-round bye. I mean, um and they want that because you don't want to be in that addle bracket and then it comes down to who who bid what money to, to host a game, you know, who, who yeah. has a larger crowd. And, and it would be good for them to get that by. Um, you know, they're probably – if they have to go on the road in the playoffs, they, you know, they'd have to go to like a Missouri Valley or, or a Southland just to kind of keep it a little bit regional. Um, so, I, yeah, I think they're focused on, on, on winning their final two games and, and – and, Going undefeated, and you can go undefeated in the Big Sky. <laughs> you, you, you know, you're going to get a high seed, not just a, a, a low, not just a seed. Yeah, no doubt. If you could uh, maybe look in the crystal ball, who do you think those four seeds are going to be? Well, I think uh, North Dakota State has kind of put itself in a good spot. Um, it, it, 
You t- you're talk, talking nationally, correct? Yeah, yep, nationally. Correct. Yeah, I mean, Illinois State, uh, you know, if they went out, they still have a high strength of schedule. Jacksonville State should win their final two games and, and finish 10-1. and one. They'll be the number one overall seed as, as long as they're 10-1. Uh, and, yeah. and, then, and then you can make a case, you know, for a bunch of teams. But, uh, you know, it does come down to strength of schedule. Um, Southern Utah will be right up there. Um, you know, they did get handled by South Dakota State, so they probably wouldn't be a top uh, four seed if, if if they finish nine and two, but they'll certainly be right there in the mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, Montana with a bizarre win against Idaho State. First off, <laughs> I mean we've seen you know from the Michigan Michigan State game, we've seen some some <laughs> weird things happen, but that's got to be right up there at the top of them, is it not? <laughs> well, nothing's normal with the Grizz, right? <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know that's just a tremendous way to finish. I mean, you know it, it it's the kind kind of win they needed to, to, to go in these final two games because you know that's a team that can't lose again if if they're going to make the playoffs um you know it, it makes it fun i mean to have that kind of surprise ending you know it, it just shows you how wacky the conference can be and, and just you never know i mean you go to a game you're going to see something that's you know you had never seen before you know that's that's what i tell a lot of people the about the big sky conference these are games you want to go to because chances are you'll see something you just don't see a lot on saturdays and sundays <laughs> You know, strange things happen. That's what makes this conference so much fun. Uh, But let's talk about the Grizzlies a little bit. Uh, They've got Eastern and Montana State uh, back-to-back weeks. I think these games looked a little bit more interesting, you know, before the season started than it is now. But do you see this team with the ability to win these last two games and finish off with a seven-win season? I do. I, I made uh, playoff projections the other day, and I included them in the field at seven and four. I think they can sneak by Eastern Washington here. Um, I think they should be able to, to beat Montana State. You know, especially if if it means they're they could be headed to the playoffs. Um, yeah, I mean they're in a precarious spot. You know, they they answered last week, and you know they got to keep it going. But I, I do think they can they can win this game with their defense against Eastern. One question I always like to ask you, who's your top five? I know we see the stats poll, but who's Craig Haley's top five teams in the country right now? Uh, I went with Jacksonville State, uh, North North Dakota State uh, 2. Um, you're catching me on the spot here trying to remember who I picked. <laughs> um, I know I had uh, Illinois State up there. Coastal Carolina, I, th- I think I had moved back up. Um, but, you know, it, it's – Jacksonville State has gone out and earned it. They're they're a team that's avoided all these upsets along the way. Um, you know they're they're eight and one. They just they were in back to back games here where they were two undefeated uh, teams in, in conference play and and they they whooped Eastern uh, Kentucky and then beat Eastern uh, Illinois. They've earned that number one seed. Um, McNeese, there's another one that I had up there. I mean they're they're the only other team getting first place votes at this point and obviously they're undefeated. But I, I do think Jacksonville State has earned that number one uh, position at this point. Well, Craig, we appreciate it. Thanks, as always, for joining us, my friend. All right. Thank you, Scott. Craig Haley, FCS Senior Director from Stats. Special thanks to him. Also, Idaho State Coach Mike Kramer, Northern Colorado running back Trey Reek. I'm Scott Gerard. Thanks for listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. 